Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Natsu Basho Day 8 coming up yesterday. What the hell was that? 13 correct picks out of 20, 4 in the top 10, 9 in the bottom 10. I wish you could see me holding up my fingers right now because I'm doing it with such intensity it would make for a great view, but again, I need a camera. Mmm! Well then, I think what we're going to do today, this is definitely what we're going to do today. After the picks, I will put my own top 10, the ones I think are the best 10 picks, and then I am going to randomize 10 other picks. So some of them might overlap, but a lot of them won't, I'm sure. They're going to be randomized which selections and also where in the list they go. And we're going to see which one does better, because we're at that point of I don't even know how to pick the best picks right now. So let's get going, because... For all my complaining, this is still a shitload of fun. Let's go. Hidenoumi and Koto Kuzan. Do you think Koto Kuzan is going to win a fight in this Basho? I do. I think he definitely will. You'd think that going against somebody from Jurio is going to be his best chance to do that because that's where he actually had a little bit of success, blew through the ranks there. But Hidenoumi has only lost to guys who are doing extremely well down there. And I don't think Koto Kuzan wins a fight until he ends up facing somebody who he gets the jump on and who their tournament is already kind of decided and they just don't want to risk an injury so they give up quickly. That's not happening yet. Hit an Oumi to win. Chiyo Tairu and Azumaru. They have both lost their first three and then won their next four. They have an extremely close head-to-head. -head. The only difference between them, really, is that Chiyo Tairu has definitely faced a higher level of competition in the sense that the people he's fought are doing better in this tournament overall. That's all there really is to go on, so he gets the edge. Midori Fuji and Meisei. Right now, Meisei looks like he can beat guys who he can slip. He, his movement seems okay, but then when he hits them, they just stand there and they don't really push back. Midori Fuji is not going to do that. He's going to keep moving, and I don't think Meisei is going to be able to hit him hard enough to get him out of the ring. Midori Fuji to win. Mio Giryu and Yu Takayama. Mio Giryu lost yesterday to Midori Fuji when Midori Fuji looked like... Basically, it looked like Mio Giryu had a good plan going in, and then Midori Fuji was just like, Haha, tricked you, and it worked. Good for him. Like, there's nothing illegitimate about that victory at all. But... Miyogiryu is still doing pretty well, and Yutakiyama is super riding the struggle bus. Miyogiryu is 4-2 a lifetime against Yutakiyama. He's won the last two. Everything points towards him having the edge here. Sadano Umi against Ichi Yamamoto. Uh-oh, folks. Ichi, wa he lost two now. Mmm, that doesn't look good. He's streaky, and that starts a bad streak. It's not that he couldn't recover from it, and it's not like I think he's going to go 5-10 and 10 at this point, but this was not the matchup he needed right now. Sadano Umi is feeling it. If he had lost to Aoyama, this one would be really interesting, but they've only fought once. Ichi Yamamoto won that one, but one fight doesn't necessarily mean that much, and Sadano Umi is just on a roll. Ichi Yamamoto on a hot streak, puts up a fight, Doing what he's done the last couple days, I don't think he wins this. Sadano Umi gets the call here. Kagiyaki and Nishikigi. Kagiyaki has a 9-7 lead lifetime. He's also won the last three, all of them by Yori Kiri. Now Nishikigi arguably is doing a little better. They're both 3-4, and four, but Nishikigi probably should have beat Koto Shoho. Kagiyaki winning three times in a row by the same method means Nishikigi needs to prove he can figure out what to do about that before I start picking him to win this fight. Kagiyaki to win. Oho and Kota Shoho. Now even though Kota Shoho has a better record at a higher rank, I think Oho has the advantage. They're 2-2 two two lifetime, but Oho's won the last two, and also Kota Shoho has two wins that were extremely close. Yesterday's win was actually an overturned decision by the judges. So he's, I'm glad he's 4 and 3 because I did pick him to do well for the whole Basho, but he's not really fighting at that level right now. Oho having some good recent success bodes well. I think he wins this. Shimano Umi and Teretsuyoshi. 
I don't regret picking Teretsu Yoshi to win yesterday because the fight that I watched between him and Uro where he did win, he was super aggressive and it worked out really well. Yesterday, that aggression just wasn't there. I think maybe he was just being more careful knowing that the same trick might not work twice, but at the same time, for all I know, he just was losing a little bit of confidence because he isn't doing super well and wanted to be more careful to not throw away a possible win. Whatever the reason that he lost the fight, Shimano Umi has won 10 in a row against him. This is not the matchup you need when you're struggling. I know that the 60s have been an absolute curse on people, and maybe it's going to be again, but if I'm going to have these extra numbers, this is exactly the kind of matchup that they're there for. Shimano Umi should absolutely take this fight. Chiyoshoma and Takara Fuji. Takara Fuji has won 3 of 4 against Chiyoshoma. It doesn't matter. Pick against Takara Fuji until he proves he can actually win a fight. Chiyoshoma to win. Kotoeko over Okuno Umi. Okuno Umi has a 4-2 lifetime advantage over Kotoeko. However, that was their first four fights. Kotoeko has won the last two, and those are the only two relatively recent ones. In 2021, everything else was 2019 and earlier. Kotoeko is fighting better at a higher rank. Just because their records are close, I think the gap between them is a little bit wider than their records indicate. Kotoeko to win this. Ura and Tochi Notion. Ura has a 2-1 to one lifetime edge against Tochi Notion. He won their only recent fight in 2021. Now, as much as Tochi Notion is doing really well, he's won four in a row, and he showed some great moves yesterday against Kotoeko, Kotoeko fights in a much more straightforward way than Ura. Ura's got exactly the kind of style that, sure, Tochi Notion knows how to beat it. He knows how to beat every style, but this is the kind of thing that has more of a chance of giving him trouble. Given that there's no reason outside of that to pick against Ura, Ura has the edge here. Aoyama and Wakamoto Haru. Wakamoto Haru probably should have won yesterday. Obviously, the fact that it was an overturned referee's decision shows that it was very, very close. And maybe I think differently about this fight if I actually see the 5 and 2 next to Wakamoto Haru's name. But Aoyama lost by going for a pull and having it turned by Sadano Umi, and said in an interview after the fight that he knew Sadano Umi was going to be ready for the pull, but he just reflexively did it and put himself in a position to lose the fight. I am going to trust that he can figure out how to not let that happen twice. Is Wakamoto Haru good enough to beat him yes, uh, anyway? Yes, Wakamoto Haru at this point in their careers is the better fighter. I think he's proving that for sure. But Aoyama's doing well. This may be his last really good run as a Rikishi. I don't think this is where it ends. I give him this one by the slightest of margins. Tobizaru and Tamawashi. I was pretty surprised to see that Tobizaru is 2-0 against Tamawashi. Now, the next thing I looked at was, well, was Tamawashi struggling in those, those Bashos where he, uh, where he lost? And he was lower ranked, he was 10 and 6 in those, but he was doing really well, 11 and 4 and 9 and 6. He finished pretty strongly. Moreover, when he went 11 and 4, he was 11 and 3 on day 15, fought Tobizaru, who was 3 and 11, and Tobizaru still found a way to beat him. So the fact that Tamawashi is on a roll doesn't actually mean that much. Tobizaru's proven he can win this fight. I'll give him the edge here. Kiribayama and Hokuto Fuji. Now, they haven't fought very often, but this really comes down to the fact that at this point, Kiribayama is beating the people he should beat and Hokuto Fuji isn't. Give it to Kiribayama. Wakataka Kage and Kotono Waka. Wakataka Kage has now lost four fights, all by having his aggression turned against him. Can Kotono Waka do that? Yes, he absolutely can. However, Wakataka Kage is 4-0 against Kotono Waka. At some point, he's got to figure this out. Now, I'm going to use the same logic that I do with Takara Fuji and what I figured out with Meisei in the last tournament, which is just because he should be able to figure it out doesn't mean he will. But in those other cases, there were injuries either definitely or probably at play, whereas in this case, nothing seems to be wrong with him physically. He's just continually putting himself in a bad position. 
he should be able to beat a guy that he's had a lot of success against, even if it's harder than usual. But if this is going to be a good litmus test, if Katona Waka can do the same thing everyone else has to Waka Takakage, he needs to go back to the drawing board big time. And I think his coaches are starting to become a little bit of fault too. Abi and Takiyasu. Takiyasu has a 4 3 lifetime advantage on Abi, but Abi has won their only fight since he made his comeback. Takiyasu is not fighting the way he fought in March. Abi basically is. I think Abi ends up with the advantage here, but this one is ultra close. Mitakiumi and Endo. They've only fought three times since 2021. They've had four matches, but one was a walkover that Mitakiumi took. Endo is 2-1 and one in those fights, even though Mitakiumi has a 12-7 lifetime advantage. They are both pretty straightforward fighters. It's really, you know, who gets the... The unbalancing push, let's call it that. The one that gets the other guy moving the wrong way. And Endo's proven he can do that to Mitakiyumi. I'm giving Mitakiyumi the edge here, admittedly, probably because I am inclined to be biased towards the guy I've seen routinely do well in the past rather than the guy who's up and down like Endo tends to be. But Endo was really, really a tempting choice. And I am definitely not putting this on my top 10. We'll see what the dice say. Takakesho and Daesho. Takakesho has won the last four against Daesho, and this is exactly the kind of fight that Daesho is good at losing, where he's doing well, but it's a tough fight, and his straightforward diesel ass roadblock style just isn't going to get it done against the kind of fighter that he's going up against. Takakesho looks like he's got enough of his strength back that he should be able to win this fight. Hoshoryu and Shodai. Hoshoryu is 4 and 1 against Shodai. Granted, Shodai won in March, that was the first time he beat Hoshoryu, but at this point, are you really gonna pick anybody to lose to Shodai? Hoshoryu, big chances to win here. Terano Fuji and Takano Sho. I'm picking Terano Fuji, but he is extremely vulnerable, vulnerable in this fight. Endo did exactly what I said he was going to do yesterday. He was just going to go directly at Teru, and I thought Teru would be able to catch him and withstand the, the power that he could put out. And that's exactly what happened. Endo weighs over 20 kilograms less than Takano Sho, and Takano Sho is capable of doing the exact same thing. So Takano Sho absolutely should do the same tactic and make Teru prove he can deal with it. I am picking Teru, and I think Teru is only a slight favorite against almost everyone at this point, but I'm picking Teru largely because in January, after he got hurt against Meisei, the next fight against Takano Shoki was still able to win, even though he clearly wasn't right. Combine that with the fact that he's won six in a row against the guy, I think you have to give him the edge, but this, just like with Wakataka Kage, we're seeing a litmus test. If he can't beat Takano Sho, things are probably worse than his fans are hoping, and maybe a lot of people have been thinking watching the Basho up to this point. And that'll do it for our Day 8 picks. Like I said, I'm going to have my own set of picks and a randomized set of picks. I'll have both of those up at the end of the video. We'll see how they go against each other. Again, like, comment, subscribe, I will ask for later. Other than that, have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow.